want to actually make a difference, if you want to use politics as a vehicle for social change, um, then you cannot be anti-establishment all the time. So this is a very classical sort of uh, contradiction within the left that they are anti-establishment. And then once they gain power, then there is a whole lot of confusion. Then anarchist elements rise when left gains power because the left is anti-establishment. So you cannot, you have to make up your mind about, you know, whether you want to overthrow the state or you don't want to overthrow the state. So if you don't want to overthrow the state, uh, you have to find a different way of working. And we, as I see it right now, we are in a flux right now where these political categories are being redefined. So we also need to find our theory of change. Um, it may take me a year, it may take me 10 years, but uh, I have not made a political choice as such. However, the positive assessment, my positive assessment of BJP comes from mostly their work in Kashmir, uh, in the sense that they've taken our mess, they've cleaned it up, and they're now giving it back to us, you know. Um, so the left would typically say that you give human rights to people, you protect human rights, you make people's rights supreme and all of that. Uh, you give freedom, absolute freedom, and then people will not rebel. Um, however, BJP has demonstrated a different theory of change, which is a heavy-handed approach. No doubt, it's a heavy-handed approach. Uh, and uh, that has somehow saved lives. So these are two different like theories of change, and they've demonstrated their theory of change because they are in power, so they can do it. Uh, so if you want to like actually make a difference, you cannot be in the mar on the margins of the you know uh, political um, sort of uh, arena. You have to get your hands dirty. हेलो नमस्ते सलाम वालेकुम वेलकम टू द इंडिया दिस वीक के नए एपिसोड में मैं हूं आपकी होस्ट आमना बेगम खालिद बेग के साथ हेलो सलाम वालेकुम नमस्ते वेलकम ऑल दिस इज खालिद बेग विद आमना अंसारी विद अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ इंडिया दिस वीक बाय आमना एंड खालिद वी हैव अ स्पेशल गेस्ट टुडे शैला रशीद शैला ऑफ कोर्स नीड्स नो इंट्रोडक्शन फॉर्मर जेएनयू स्टूडेंट लीडर एंड नाउ समवन हु a lot of people are wondering with the new ideological positions that she's taken and we've already seen that her podcast with smita prakash was one of the most viewed uh, you know episodes for that podcast so welcome shaila welcome uh, thank you so much khaled uh, hi amna i'm glad to be here and uh, i have watched your podcast uh, you, i watched your episodes some of your episodes and i'm really glad to be on your show thank you shaila so we'll straight away dive into a lot of questions that we have and i'm sure a lot of, lot of india wants to know that and we realize that you know amongst all this debate of you know uh, like what they call the new avatar of shaila rashid what was the earlier avatar so we thought we'll just personalize it a little because that's something which in our research we found people didn't ask you much right you know the person behind shaila so could you just start off shaila like your childhood years you, you could talk about your schooling where were you born where did you grow up and what kind of a political atmosphere was it um i grew up in downtown srinagar uh, during the peak of the insurgency that's the 90s and that is the only normal that i knew and uh, in school i was a bookworm for the most part uh, not very much into sports more the topper type and our school also did not encourage physical activities very much um i think that the conflict also had something to do with it for example they would not take take us for picnics and they would cite security reasons that you know we can't ensure the security of the children so we would not go for school picnics and uh, at that time words like interrogation crackdown encounter these words were staple um when i was in the 7th standard there was a certain news in the air that if you don't cover your head you will be attacked with acid like it was a diktat of sorts that came for women so all of a sudden all of us were you know covering up and older girls they started wearing abayas and that's when abayas and burkas entered the market in a very big way so again my college years similarly 
uh, coincided with these, you know, three summers of discontent, 2008, 2009, 2010 protests. Um, so even today, you know, when I, I, I get startled when I hear firecrackers, for example, you know, unlike my other friends from the rest of India, uh, it's very traumatizing to hear the sound of firecrackers because you think that it's firing, it's an encounter that's happening. <clears throat> so, you know, when people talk about PTSD, that is post-traumatic stress disorder. In Kashmir, I think we have OTSD, we have ongoing trauma stress disorder because even now gun violence has not ended completely. Even now you have uh, terrorist incidents, encounters, uh, even though things are much better. Uh, but this is what my childhood has been like. This is what my formative experiences have been like. Right. I want to get in there. You spoke about, you know, whenever you hear firecrackers and it disturbs you and you feel, you know, sort of scared. Uh, it is sadly so normal for that generation. And uh, my wife comes from that generation and she's grown up in Kashmir and she faces the same thing. You know, yeah. and uh, she speaks about this. So it's so sad that it's so common amongst uh, the youth of that era. And today mm -hmm. is the second time I've heard this from someone else. And uh, it's something where sh she's always had my sympathy because I grew up in Pune. So I was kind of secure oh. from whatever has happening. So right. pretty tragic what the generation between yeah. 89 to 2019 uh, mostly yeah. saw. Amna, aap, uh, ka sawal next. Aap kya puchna chahte hai? Yeah, I think uh, I would like to mention here this one thing also, like so many times people ask me questions that why Muslims in India do this, do that, and bahut sare questions hote hai. but yaha pe clearly ek cheez samaj me aani chahiye ki, just like mainland India mein mein reh rahi thi, or you were living in Pune, to humare experiences bahut alag ho jate hai, it's a very difficult to answer just like we are authority ki, any, nobody can be authority ki, when it comes to those uh, Muslims ke baare mein, Indian Muslims ke baare mein baat karni hai, sab ke growing up experience tak alag hai, so, oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. So, Shaila, my question is because you are from a Muslim community, you are a Mahila, and when you talk about Muslim uh, society ki overall education, you know that we are a lot of lack of overall education, a lot of behind. And when you talk about it, आखरे है वो और भी बदतर होते जाते हैं तो मेरा आपसे ये सवाल है कि एज अ मुस्लिम वुमेन ऐसा क्या चीज था किस चीज ने आपको इंस्पिरेशन दी कि आपने अपने करियर और एजुकेशन को प्रायोरिटाइज किया आई मीन इट्स बीन माय मदर मेरी जो मदर है वो एक हाई रैंकिंग ऑफिसर एज अ हाई रैंकिंग ऑफिसर उन्होंने सर्व किया एंड शी इज बीन अ वर्किंग लेडी और उन्होंने मतलब उसमें वो तजाद नहीं था जो हम कहते हैं ना कि वर्किंग लेडी और फैमिली मतलब दोनों चीजें उन्होंने बहुत अच्छे से संभाली एक तो एसेंशियल सर्विसेज में वो काम करती थी शी वाज वर्किंग इन अ हॉस्पिटल तो उनका डेली नाइन टू फाइव चाहे हड़ताल कर्फ्यू ईद हो शी हैड टू गो तो वैसा जो एक माइंडसेट लड़कियों को मतलब नॉट जस्ट मुस्लिम लड़कियों को जनरली लड़कियों को ये बोला जाता है कि पहले जो है एजुकेशन के साथ साथ आपको फैमिली को भी रखना है या कभी फैमिली को प्रायोरिटी करना है सो शी प्रायोरिटाइज बोथ मतलब उन्होंने हमारा भी बहुत अच्छे से केयर किया और जॉब कभी कभी कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं किया तो आई थिंक ये एक किसी भी बच्चे के लिए चाहे वो मेल हो या फीमेल हो उनके लिए आई थिंक ये देखना बहुत जरूरी है एक वर्किंग मदर होना एक बच्चे के लिए बहुत बड़ा फॉर्मेटिव एक्सपीरियंस है क्योंकि वो फिर अपनी नेक्स्ट जनरेशन से अपनी वाइफ से अपने आप से वही एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं तो यू विल ऑल्सो सी अ डिफरेंस इन दिस जैसे So I think mother uh, plays the most important part in yeah, that. True. I mean, I would like to uh, add that my mom uh, educational background to chalo kafi acha tha, but she couldn't uh, do the job or a lot of things. So unka motivation was very different. That the things I didn't get, I will make sure that they get to my children. Right, right, yeah, right. I think this is the journey of most of Indian uh, girls in the public yeah. space. Mein hai, wo, yehi do journey aapko. It's not even limited to Muslim. I agree to that. That's so, true. You can go for your question. Uh, Shaila, uh, while researching, I realize you've even studied from NIT Srinagar. Yes, yes, yes. And you're so a I, computer I engineer. Yes, yes. I did my computer science engineering. So I was very good in mathematics and physics and chemistry. I was like the state topper in mathematics and chemistry. Uh, so naturally, I uh, sort of gravitated towards uh, non-medical, just 
तो स्ट्रीम था मेरा एंड आई गॉट इनटू इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज लेकिन दिस इज आल्सो द टाइम ऑफ द आईटी बूम इन इंडिया जब 2000 2001 मतलब उस टाइम पे एक ये एक फैशन भी बन गया था ऑलमोस्ट कि कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग इट्स द हॉट करियर सो हमारी जनरेशन में मतलब कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग या इंजीनियरिंग इन जनरल हैड बिकम लाइक बेसिक ग्रेजुएशन जैसे पहले बी बी एस सी होते थे लोग मतलब उस तरह से फिर बहुत सारे बी टेक बी निकल गए हमारी जनरेशन में एंड दे मेनी ऑफ देम चेंज देयर मेनी ऑफ आज चेंज आर करियर सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट मी अलॉट ऑफ पीपल चेंज देयर करियर्स क्योंकि पहले एक वो बन गया था आई टी बूम के टाइम पे कि इंजीनियर बनना है एंड देन यू रियलाइज ओ वेट लाइक आई हैव अदर इंटरेस्ट ऑल्सो आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन आर्ट आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन लिटरेचर और हिस्ट्री तो कई सारे बच्चे फिर सिविल सर्विस में भी चले जाते हैं इंजीनियरिंग करके बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू स्टडी दोज थिंग्स सो या दैट हैपन टू लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ आर जनरेशन सो टेल मी दिस यू नो for any average indian parent indian student especially in the non medical uh, field getting a seat in iit or the prestigious nits mm-hmm. is set like you've got nit srinagar which is you know very highly ranked and you do your computer science get placed to the big company mm-hmm. how what does it take for a shaila rashid then to say you know what i've cracked it i've studied for years but i'm not doing this and what was any resistance from your mother or How did you also think कि भाई मुझे नहीं करना है? Uh, I mean, I would say that the uh, initially when these three this these three summers of discontent that I mentioned two thousand and eight, two thousand nine, two thousand and ten. So initially when two thousand and eight happened, जब वो रग्डो रग्डो protests वगैरह जब हुए यहाँ पे start हुआ पहले, so I was like कि what is this? What is going on? What are they doing? What is this chaos? You know, I don't understand it. But by the time two thousand and ten happened. uh so a lot of sympathy with the you know stone pelters had developed the human rights discourse had developed and you also saw uh, you know disparity jaise haryana mein kahin pe kuch wo jaat agitation mein stone pelting hui lekin unke upar us tarah se force use nahi kiya gaya jis tarah se jo kashmiri ladke hain jo stone pelting kar rahe the un pe jis tarah se लाइव बुलेट्स एमिनेशन वगैरह चलाया गया तो ये सारी चीजें देखने की वजह से कहीं ना कहीं आई वुड से इट्स अ बर्डन ऑफ द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इन अ सेंस ऑफ कोर्स दिस आल्सो मेक्स अस यूनिक बट इट आल्सो मींस दैट वाइल द रेस्ट ऑफ माय क्लासमेट्स दे जस्ट यू नो कैरीड ऑन विद देयर करियर्स एंड दे यू नो राइट नाउ दे आर इन सीनियर लीडरशिप पोजिशन इन कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड I somehow felt I was also placed. I also, you know, got campus placement. But I felt that there is something more that I need to do. There are other interventions that I need to do. Um, I need to do something, uh, you know, about this these human rights issues. I mean, I I didn't quite know what. Uh, but for example, I wanted to write about it, or I wanted to raise awareness about the human rights issues. So th- those were my motivations, I suppose. Uh, which which you can't like really do if you're in a corporate setup. Hmm. Yeah, and your mom was okay at that time. Um, no, that not. I mean, I would say one thing that uh, <clears throat> my mother, she's given me the best of upbringing, best of education, all the facilities, everything. But one thing that I have to commend her for, she's never imposed her choices on me. So in that way, all of my uh, sort of uh, uh, all the good things are her contribution, but all the mistakes are my own. So. i have made my own mistakes and i think like that's what we need to do like because otherwise you just keep blaming your parents i've heard people saying that uh mere parents ne mujhe us time ye nahi karne diya mere parents ne mujhe wahan se yahan bula liya but actually you have to do what you have to do you can't make your parents an excuse uh if you have to excel in any chosen path like it's up to you so you can't keep blaming your parents uh, for that okay uh shala maine ek article mein padhi thi to Uh, उसमें लिखा था कि जब जे के कंट्रोवर्सी हुआ था तो आपकी मॉम उस वक्त काफी परेशान हो गई थी एंड शी इवन आस्क यू कि नहीं अभी बस बहुत हो गया पब्लिक स्पेस में ज्यादा बोलने की जरूरत नहीं है एंड यू टू खर टू द जे आल्सो सो उस टाइम आपको किस तरह का मतलब समाज से या आसपास से किस तरह की एक तरह का जो रिस्ट्रिक्शन होता है या जो लोग अपनी कंसर्न बताते हैं वो कैसे आपको कैसे आपने झेला एंड कैसे आपने उसको मैनेज किया काइंड kind ऑफ of. uh no certainly i think that is you're right that is one point that's i think the only point when uh, she has actually uh, you know tried to intervene or tried to tell me otherwise wahi ek time tha just time pe kyunki it was a very deadly cocktail of you know a lot of like uh, so there is abdul guru there is uh, um, uh, whatever like you know already i think like and i had been arrested at that time 
um and a lot of like uh, there was a lot of like media frenzy around the issue so it was a very it was definitely a very scary thing for her as a parent to see uh, i mean everything is fine um, but as a kashmiri obviously she did not want me to be arrested or to you know get into some kind of like irreversible kind of problem uh, i think as a kashmiri parent that much concern is fair uh, however having said that um, i also uh, sort of um, i mean i did what i had to do uh, she's always been a well wisher i mean she's always uh, tried to you know do her do her duty as a parent so i think as a parent she was just doing her duty telling me ki yeah. uh, you should be a little careful lekin as an elected representative i did what i had to do and um, uh, i think the movement needed a sort of a stewardship at that time a uh, steering uh, so that it doesn't sort of descend into anarchy and at the same time i made sure that we uh, speak up for all of the students not just for any one but for everyone who was arrested or targeted otherwise uh, i made sure that it was inclusive and at the same time it was not you know it didn't go into anarchy um so i think yeah, i did play a very uh, uh unique role which i don't think that like uh, um uh, i think that's for some things uh, you need a uh, you need a leader who has uh those things in mind who has that vision and who has that uh, you know sort of caliber at that point um because these are very crucial moments in history you are you are standing up for your university you are trying to uh save the you know your fellow students but at the same time you also have to give the correct picture of your university that our university is not like this jnu is not like this uh this does not happen at jnu uh so i think it was important for me to play that role at that time this uh iske baad ek question isi ke sath add karna chahungi do you think ki as a women public space mein rehna thoda zyada tough hota hai um certainly yes absolutely uh, however in in left politics um it is a tad bit easier i would say uh, because uh, see the public space what is the problem with the public space the public spaces in india are very masculine they are very heavily tilted towards the uh, you know, male uh, or may you know there's a masculine energy in protests in rallies so aap you will often see ki jaise पोलिटिकल रैलीज होती है उसमें किसी लीडर का जो है हाथ टूट जाता है या टांग टूट जाता है या किसी को चोट लग जाती है सो ये आप बहुत जैसे अभी बांसुरी स्वराज जो है इलेक्शन रैली में शी हेड यू नो शी हेड इंजर्ड हर फोटो समथिंग दिस हैपन वेरी रूटीनली क्योंकि जिस तरह से जो पोलिटिकल रैलीज का एटमोसफेयर है इट इज वेरी मास्क्यूलिन इट इज वेरी मच थोड़ा टिल्टेड इन फेवर ऑफ मसल एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट इन लेफ्ट इट्स अ लिटिल बिट लेस बिकॉज लेफ्ट इज अ मोर सॉर्ट ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअलाइज काइंड ऑफ स्पेस सो देर वीमेन टेन टू फाइंड मोर स्पेस आई से बट मेन स्ट्रीम पॉलिटिक्स येस इट्स लाइक यू रियली हैव टू हैव लाइक अ लॉट ऑफ मसल पार अराउंड यू इन ऑर्डर टू यू नो इवन लाइक स्टैंड इन अ पोलिटिकल रैली आई से Shaila uh, we now want to get into you know your journey of JNU now you know JNU is quite an enigma Shaila it's one of India's top universities our mm-hmm. current external affairs minister Mr Jay Shankar is an alumni so is you know our finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman it has given us some incredible people who have you know held top positions powerful positions in politics academia and many other fields but yet at the same time shaila there seems to be a massive issue with the political science department where slogans like bharat tere tukde honge have been there uh, calls for support for secessionist terror groups whether that's maoists whether that's you know islamist terror groups or other any secessionist groups has also been intellectually back there so taking this as a background and your own journey of jnu i want you to into you know like talk about both these things and your own personal journey of jnu uh, so first i'd like to correct you these uh, slogans that you mentioned this bharat tere tukde and all of that i think they've said this repeatedly over the years that never before and never again had those slogans been raised in jnu only on that particular day because the people who raised the slogans were not from jnu they were not jnu students and uh, i have no idea why um, you said the political science department because there's no such thing uh, like uh, you know that political science department students are more uh, uh, if anything they are more competitive in life or any uh, you know uh, in a sense uh, uh, more sort of like oriented towards the job market or whatever uh, no so but I i'm talking think... about 
the 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 department i mean i might I have got the name wrong the but the school of social sciences which has right theology right. political science history all of that okay. um right. so what i'd like to say is that uh, there are all shades of opinion uh, mm -hmm. which coexist in jain and mm -hmm. that is from the far left to the far right uh, mm -hmm. there there are two things there is freedom of opinion and there is freedom of action so i think under the indian constitution we have freedom of opinion we mm -hmm. have freedom even to express our uh, beliefs until they come under those restrictions but you don't have freedom of action like you don't have absolute freedom of action you can't do whatever you like for example i may have an opinion that i want to slap someone but you can't really slap someone mm -hmm. uh, so that's the difference between opinion and uh, action so yes there are a lot of like uh, there's a lot of exposure to uh, uh, liberation theology there is a lot of exposure to um, theories you know from uh, say um, uh, north african liberation movements or uh, south american uh, resistance movements there's a lot of like uh, there's a world of literature uh, that people are exposed to over there and people develop different views and at the same time we also have a sanskrit department for example where people are more exposed to you know the indic traditions and all of that so overall uh, all the ideologies sort of coexist in jnu and what we really believed in or used to believe in uh, is that we should counter ideology with ideology we should counter words with words now what is the test of uh, you know which ideologies find more traction and which ideologies don't that is the jnu student union election because in the student union election um most of the ultra left ultra right i mean first of all they wouldn't like be uh, either they would not contest or they would not be very you know relevant politically uh, students would end up choosing the more um, rational alternative which is more aligned with the constitutional values of india kyunki uh, aise to ideology like there can be even one person at times you would have like some funny joker kind of person you know uh wearing a uh, uh, like saffron robe and calling himself yogi for example you also had those characters right and uh, like i think the guy also stood up for the election or whatever but people students voters because they are also indians so they tend to choose the uh, the parties that are constitutionally aligned that they feel raise their issues that they feel are morally on the right side of things uh, so that incident which you mentioned is an aberration for the most part are there far left ideologies are there sympathies for far right ideologies absolutely no denying that but at the same time i would say that that particular incident was an aberration which never happened before and never happened again okay and what was your pull towards left wing politics um see i uh, i i found that the left raised a lot of issues that uh, we could we wouldn't find other people raising in the sense that if you go outside the campus you would never hear about those issues so left is a very different way of theorizing the world a very different way of looking at the world and once you start seeing the world in that way it is difficult to unsee it then uh, which is also why left politics can become quite a, quite dogmatic because you tend to see the world in a certain kind of way Uh, so that's where the dogmatic element of left politics comes from uh, but it's certainly also very attractive because it's a new way a new way of thinking opens up when you uh, so one of the most contra one of, one of the most important contributions of left politics for example is that it provides the first systematic treatment of women's issues uh, especially the issue of women's labor the men's productive labor and reproductive labor and all of that so as a woman or as you know someone who faces marginalization in any sense or if you've been exposed to violence or if you've been exposed to uh, conflict or something uh, these things they actually uh, resonate with you a lot the left raises issues of uh, hierarchy in society the left raises issues of human rights so if your formative experiences have been that you've witnessed uh, domestic violence at home or if you witnessed conflict in your you know where you come from uh you are more likely to be attracted to that kind if you if you not had such an up privileged upbringing so you're more likely right. to be attracted to that politics i'd say right okay. so i think the environment of growing up in a conflict zone and then looking at things in a new way and then women centric approaches what made left aspirational for you would that be a correct um, yeah. assessment yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. all right amna okay. aapka next question शरा लेफ्ट पे ही मेरा एक सवाल है कि आई रेड समवेयर दैट यू सेड कि यू आर पार्ट ऑफ लेफ्ट 
and you are very tilted hmm. toward left because of their progressive ideas jo hamesha wo progressive ideas women equality and all those things they right. talk about it hmm. so that is the reason also you mentioned that uh, you oppose bjp because you see them totally opposite of it hmm. so what is i mean i wanted to ask ki what is now the situation like uh, your entire uh, stand as ideology are you hmm. matlab uh, i i would put it like that ki now you you are more conservative side in comparison to progressive ide- ideas or did you realize ki the way you used to see bjp as a uh, opposite of progressive progressive ideas that is not true what is the re- uh, realization here सो देर आर टू थिंग्स एक तो होता है कि आपका जो एनालिसिस है सोसाइटी का एनालिसिस uh, लेफ्ट का मतलब बहुत uh, मैं कह सकती हूँ कि बेमिसाल है क्योंकि जब आप ऑपरेसर एंड ऑपरेस्ड की कैटेगरीज में वर्ल्ड को देखते हैं तो तो वर्ल्ड स्टार्ट मेकिंग अ लॉट ऑफ सेंस कि गरीब गरीब क्यों है पासमांदा पासमांदा क्यों है औरतें पिछड़ी क्यों है आ, जो गरीब है वो अमीर क्यों नहीं हो पाते तो जो एनालिसिस है लेफ्ट पॉलिटिक्स का मुझे लगता है वो काफी अप्रोप्रिएट है और बहुत ही पावरफुल है इन अ सेंस तो ये एक जो एक कॉन्फ्लिक थ्योरी वाला पर्सपेक्टिव होता है कॉन्फ्लिक मतलब दो तरह की थ्योरीज होती हैं सोशोलॉजी में एक कॉन्फ्लिक थ्योरी और एक फंक्शनल थ्योरी अब जो कॉन्फ्लिक थ्योरी है वो आपको बोलता है कि वर्ल्ड जो है वो बाइंड्री अपोजिट्स में है कि वेमेन आर अगेंस्ट मैन वेमेन को मतलब जो फैमिली सिस्टम है वो उनको अप्रेस करता है सिमिलरली वर्कर और फैक्ट्री ओनर के बीच में जो अपोजिशन है सिमिलरली दलित ब्राह्मण के बीच में जो अपोजिशन है तो ये कॉन्फ्लिक्ट थ्योरी वर्ल्ड व्यू है जिसमें आपको यूजली बाइनरी अपोजिशन मिलेंगे देन देर इज अ फंक्शनलिस्ट वर्ल्ड व्यू जिसमें है कि नहीं ये सब कुछ सोशल हार्मनी के लिए ठीक है जब औरतें घर का काम चला रही है मर्द घर का काम चला रहे हैं तो तभी जाके फैमिली यूनिट जो है वो आगे बढ़ रहा है सो so, मतलब कॉम्प्रोमाइज और उस पर बेस्ड होता है सो uh, so, मैं ये कहूँगी कि जो एनालिसिस पार्ट है वो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट थ्योरी का एकदम ऑन पॉइंट एकदम अप्रोप्रिएट है लेकिन फिर आता है आपकी थ्योरी ऑफ चेंज क्या है ठीक है अगर आप सोशल चेंज करना चाहते हैं तो उसके लिए पॉलिटिक्स इज अ व्हीकल फॉर सोशल चेंज अगर आप बदलाव लाना चाहते हैं तो आपको पावर में भी होना पड़ेगा आपको पॉलिटिक्स में एंगेज भी करना पड़ेगा आपको पॉलिसी मेकिंग का जो भी प्रोसीजर है उसके थ्रू जाना पड़ेगा आ, सो उसमें जो है आप सिर्फ इतना बोल के कि डिक्टेटरशिप ऑफ द प्रोलिटेरिएट उससे काम नहीं होगा दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम विद लेफ्ट पॉलिटिक्स दैट इफ यू आस्क लेफ्ट पॉलिटिक्स एंड आई आस्ट पीपल हियर इन इंडिया एंड आई आस्ट पीपल इन अब्रॉड जो मतलब लेफ्ट आइडियोलॉजी से ताल्लुक रखते हैं मैं बाहर भी जैसे कॉन्फ्रेंस वगैरह में जाती हूँ तो उनसे मिलती हूँ एंड आई आस्क देम कि यू नो व्हाट इज द वे फॉरवर्ड एंड दे वुड से डिक्टेटरशिप ऑफ द प्रोलिटेरिएट लिटरली जिसका अगर आप आम दुनिया में जाएंगे तो उसका कोई सेंस नहीं बना पाएंगे कि इसका मतलब क्या है डिक्टेटरशिप ऑफ द प्रोलिटेरियट सो द थियोरी ऑफ चेंज कैन बी डिफरेंट सो योर परस्पेक्टिव कैन बी इन्फॉर्म्ड बाई अ लेफ्ट परस्पेक्टिव बट वट यू हैव टू डू अबाउट इट दैट कैन बी वेरी डिफरेंट अब अगर आप अब we we I, I think that we need a redefinition of political categories right now in India especially मैं इंडिया की बात करूंगी क्योंकि जो लेफ्ट है वो तमाम तरीके के लिबरल इशूज को रेज करता है यानी कि जैसे एल जी बी टी इशू है फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन का इशू है ह्यूमन राइट्स का सो दीज आर ऑल एक्चुअली लिबरल इशूज या डेमोक्रेसी फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेफ्ट टॉक्स अबाउट डेमोक्रेसी राइट टू डेमोक्रेसी राइट टू फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन राइट टू चूज माई जेंडर These are all actually liberal demands. तो जो इंडियन लेफ्ट है वो मोस्टली आपको मिलेगा जो लिबरल डिमांड्स है उनको रेज करते हुए या जो फेमिनिज्म के इशूज हैं वेमेंस राइट टू रोम अबाउट राइट टू लॉयटर ऑल ऑफ दीज दीज आर लिबरल इशूज जो लिबरल पार्टी यानी कि कांग्रेस जो नॉर्मली जिसको आप लिबरल पार्टी समझेंगे वो आपको दिखेंगे कि वो री डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की बात कर रही है वो वेल्थ री डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की बात कर रही है या वो कह रही है कि एक यूनिवर्सल बेसिक इनकम वेमेन को मिलेगा एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट सो दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द लेफ्टिस्ट इशूज एंड समटाइम्स एक्सट्रीम लेफ्ट इशूज आल्सो द राइट विंग व्हिच इज द सपोजली बीजेपी द राइट विंग पार्टी दे आर एक्चुअली डूइंग अ लॉट ऑफ वेलफेयर इफ यू सी थ्रू देयर स्कीम्स बिकॉज दे आर इन गवर्नमेंट सो दे कैन डू इट सो दे आर सो सम ऑफ द स्कीम्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट दैट आई रिपीटेडली मैंशन द पी एम where 80 crore uh, people are getting rations uh, or the you know uh, pradhan mantri jan aushadhi yojana 
where the poor are getting generic medicines. Actually, not just the poor, anybody, everybody is getting generic medicines. So these are actually classical left demands, or rather the social democrat left ki demands. Hoti hai. So there is a redefinition of political categories that is needed in India. Bojo Hamari ideas take left, left, hai, center, center, hai, right, right. Hai. Aisa hai nahi actually. Agar aap dekhenge, BJP is doing a lot of welfare. And in fact, abhi jo election mein thoda result kam mila hai, uh, the welfare pushes even more. Kisan Saman ne diye, usko release kiya gaya. Uh, so BJP is actually very heavily pro welfare. Uh, now, I have not made any other political choice in the sense that I have not joined any other political party or anything. I was briefly with one party in Kashmir, but that had a very brief tenure. Uh, but it's not like I'm a member of the BJP or something. However, uh, what I've now realized is that if you want to actually make a difference, if you want to use politics as a vehicle for social change, um, then you cannot be anti-establishment all the time. So this is a very classical sort of uh, contradiction within the left that they are anti-establishment. And then once they gain power, then there's a whole lot of confusion. Then anarchist elements rise when left gains power because the left is anti-establishment. So you cannot, you have to make up your mind about, you know, whether you want to overthrow the state or you don't want to overthrow the state. So if you don't want to overthrow the state, uh, you have to find a different way of working. And we, as I see it right now, we are in a flux right now where these political categories are being redefined. So we also need to find our theory of change. Um, it may take me a year, it may take me 10 years, but uh, I have not made a political choice as such. However, the positive assessment, my positive assessment of BJP comes from mostly their work in Kashmir uh, in the sense that they've taken our mess, they've cleaned it up, and they're now giving it back to us, you know. Um, so the left would typically say that you give human rights to people, you protect human rights, you make people's rights supreme and all of that. Uh, you give freedom, absolute freedom, and then people will not rebel. Um, however, BJP has demonstrated a different theory of change, which is a heavy-handed approach. No doubt it's a heavy-handed approach. Uh, and uh, that has somehow saved lives. So these are two different like theories of change and they've demonstrated their theory of change because they are in power. So they can do it. Uh, so if you want to like actually make a difference, you cannot be in the mar on the margins of the you know uh, political um, sort of uh, arena. You have to like, get your hands dirty. Uh, I want I want to ask a subsequent questions. Uh, is it uh -huh. yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. So abhi jaise left ki baat ho rahi, and I agree ki I don't think ki anyone in the public space jo left ke idea ke through nahi gaya ho. वो hmm. अपने लाइफ में किसी ना किसी टाइम पे बहुत इंस्पायर्ड होते हैं और हम बहुत लर्न करते हैं बट थ्रू द टाइम यू स्टार्ट सीइंग अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग व्हिच मेक यू आल्सो री क्वेश्चंस योर बिलीव्स एंड एवरीथिंग तो मेरे लिए ये यहां पे स्टार्ट हुआ कि लेफ्ट जहां पे वुमेन इक्वलिटी की बहुत बातें बताता है समझाता है बेसिक आईडिया ऑफ पैट्रियार्की एंड हाउ इट इज लाइक सिस्टम नॉट मैन वर्सेस वुमेन देयर आर सो मेनी ग्रेट आइडियाज देयर यू कैन लर्न बट द सेम टाइम जब मुस्लिम विमेन की बातें आती हैं, so I see them so silent हुँ, because हुँ. आ, जो अगर आप विमेन की बात करते हैं तो इंडियन मुस्लिम विमेन भी उसी का पार्ट है, but they don't want to touch it. मैंने एक दो आर्टिकल पढ़े हुए हैं that is like a formality kind of वो मेन मुद्दा नहीं बनता है जिस तरह से कि अदर इश्यूज बनते हैं तो ये जब मैं देखती हूं तो ये मुझे हिपोक्रेसी लगती है and I just want to understand कि because you have been at some point part of the left what is the reason? Hmm. What is the reason that their values are not applied to all community uniformly? I can cite a reason, but I am not the ultimate authority on it. Uh, there can be different reasons. Someone can point out a different reason. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I feel is that the left gets caught up in its own uh, aspiration for perfection. That is what happens. You want to have a perfect theory, perfect politics now. Theory perfect up ki ho sakti hai. Lekin jab aap actually jab aap real politics mein aate hai. Agar aap kaan pe, agar aap ka base, agar aap ka mass base overwhelmingly Muslim male hai. To vahaan pe agar aap baat karenge Muslim women ke rights ki. So you will find an opposition, which is why theory, joh mene pehle ek distinction banaya theory or politics ke bich mein. Theory or politics bhoat alag hai. Aapki theory bhoat perfect ho sakti hai. Or left ki often hoti bhi hai bhoat theory perfect. Usse hum sab... प्रभावित होते हैं जैसा आपने बोला इंस्पायर होते हैं लेकिन जब आप रियल ग्राउंड पे आते हैं ग्राउंड पे दस चीजें हो जाती हैं 
अगर आप वहाँ पे ये बोलेंगे कि नहीं जी औरतों को भूखे में रहने की जरूरत नहीं है इनफैक्ट आई विल गिव यू मैं इतना दूर क्यों जा रही हूँ मैं आपको एक रियल एग्जाम्पल देती हूँ फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्रेवल एंड ब्रेड इंडिया आई हैव बीन इन्वाइटेड टू प्लेस ऑल ओवर द कंट्री एंड आई हैव बीन इन्वाइटेड इन टू हिंदू होम्स आई हैव बीन इन्वाइटेड इन टू मुस्लिम होम्स सो मुस्लिम होम्स में uh, आप क्या देखेंगे कि uh, जैसे जो औरत है उसने सब कुछ बना रखा है खाना वाना जिसके मतलब दे दे फॉर एग्जाम्पल मुझे जैसे होस्ट किया जाता था uh, तो आई वुड गो आई वुड ईट एंड बट ऑल द पीपल वो होस्टिंग मी दे आर मैन सो विद इन द हाउस होल्ड द वुमेन इज नॉट टू बी सीन एंड देन आई हैड टू गो एंड आस कि भाभी कहाँ पर है या आंटी कहाँ पर है दीदी कहाँ पर है एंड देन आई वुड बी टेकन टू द किचन एंड देन आई वुड हैव टू गो मीट टू वुमेन इन द किचन राइट so this is the big contradiction when you are in left politics theek okay, hai your supporters will be sort of overwhelmingly uh, say people from minority community or whatever but then unke jo internal contradictions it is too inconvenient to uh, you know delve into those i mean i did write about this issue once ki uh, then the same men would also say to their women ki dekho inki taraf dekho ki you know why aren't you being like them but are you giving them the chance to be like me because being like me also means like traveling across the length and breadth of the subcontinent like will you allow your women uh, to do that so this is a very complex thing and that's why like real politics and university politics are so different so uh, uh, just to sort of stretch it a little bit more it uh, this sort of uh, this contradiction also uh, i mean when i came into kashmir politics for the first time in 2018 mujhe bada bahut कल्चर शॉक लग गया क्योंकि यूनिवर्सिटी में तो मतलब कभी सिफारिश ब्राइब ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स वी हैव हर्ड ऑफ दीज थिंग्स योर पॉलिटिक्स वॉज सिंपली लाइक यू नो व्हाट इज योर स्टैंड ऑन दिस इशू व्हाट इज योर स्टैंड ऑन दिस इशू वेर यू स्टैंड ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर मैटर दैट्स वॉट पॉलिटिक्स वॉज बट वेन आई वेंट टू द ग्राउंड पॉलिटिक्स वॉज नॉट अबाउट दैट इट वॉज नॉट अबाउट योर स्टैंड या आप क्या भाषण दोगे इट वॉज ऑल अबाउट कि आप मेरा ये काम करा दो मेरा इस ऑफिस में ये फाइल पड़ा हुआ है आप मेरी सिफारिश कर दो एंड इट वॉज अज कल्चर शॉक फॉर मी सो आई थिंक लेफ्ट को भी ना वही एक कल्चर शॉक लगता है जब वो यूनिवर्सिटी से बाहर जाके ग्राउंड पे जाते हैं देन इट बिकम्स टू इनकनवीनियंट इफ यूर मास बेस इज प्रिडोमिनेंटली मुस्लिम मेल सो इट बिकम्स टू इनकनवीनियंट टू देन यू नो रेज दी इशू बिकॉज फिर यू विल जस्ट लूज एवरीबडी एंड देन ऑफकोर्स द लेफ्ट ऑल्सो एज अरी ऑन इट कि भाई ये धीरे धीरे चेंज आएगा मतलब ये फ्रॉम विद इन द कम्युनिटी हम फोर्स नहीं कर सकते हैं चेंज सो वो भी एक मसला है कि आप सच में आप फोर्स नहीं कर सकते हो ये विद इन जब तक कम्युनिटी से नहीं आएगा तो तब तक आप एज अ पॉलिटिकल पार्टी कुछ नहीं कर सकते हो हाँ एज अ गवर्नमेंट आप कर सकते हो एज अ गवर्नमेंट अगर आप कोई लॉ लाते हो फिर जो है सोसाइटी उसके अराउंड इवॉल्व होती है जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल अनटचेबिलिटी का लॉ है मतलब हिंदू सोसाइटी वो कास्ट पे कास्ट के ऊपर ऑर्गेनाइज है इट इज ऑर्गेनाइज अराउंड कास्ट लाइन but the moment uh, like we have article 17 we have laws against untouchability um wo jab aaya jab matlab inception se in hindustan ke ayin ke inception se untouchability ban hua to society ne khud ko uske around mold kiya abhi bhi problems hai abhi bhi untouchability ke aap issues face karte ho but as a political party aap zyada kuch nahi kar paoge as a government yes if you are in the government then you can bring these legislations i totally agree but at the same time i also see the hypocrisy on a level of uh authority since like uh congress abhi main rajasthan mein hu and congress yahan pe uh, state government mein hai so they bring this kind of you know uh, scheme ghungat chodo duniya dekho that kind of scheme and agar kisi gaon se sare ke sare auraton ne ghungat utar diye to we will give 5 lakh rupees to development mm-hmm. ke liye but there is a not a one single mention of burqa you know so these hmm. kind of hypocrisy i have been seeing from the ground so long and 75 hmm. saal ho gaye hain ek bjp jaisi government aati hai aur wo bhi abhi bhi unilateral uh, divorce hi hai muslims mein but at hmm. least instant triple talaq ban kar diya hai so the right hmm. is doing the left work here hmm, hmm. in, so in the sense yeah right. on the ground yeah, yeah. so form, yeah. exactly so uh, ye wali jo uh, I mean, you can go into ideas and everything, but when you see on the ground reality, so you cannot unsee it basically, even in a political form. That's true. That's true. I mean, also in a democracy, political parties are also like, who are mujhboor hote hain. They are sort of also tied to their mass base. 
तो उनके माज के जो सेंटिमेंट्स है वो ऑफन उसके अगेंस्ट में नहीं जा पाते हैं नेचर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रल पॉलिटिक्स हाउ एर इट्स कॉन्स्टेंट नेगोशिएशन के आप कितना कर पाओगे किस हद तक आप रिफॉर्म कर सकते हो दैट्स द टेस्ट ऑफ योर ग्रेट इवेंचुअली yeah i actually also want to add my uh, i mean disillusionment with left i mean being a big arundhati roy fan in my late teens literally being head over heels for her and falling in love with her right uh, i also i remember the first questions i made towards uh, the goddess of small things was when 2611 your morning the dead bodies of civilians are you know i mean they're still warm and Roy Mam says that how we civilians brought it upon ourselves, you know. Uh, so the, and then of course I could see the cracks which I had missed since childhood, right? So mm-hmm. her greatest bhag became her greatest critic. So mm-hmm. uh, the problem is that all the reforms were for all my Hindu friends, but there is no reform for me. And mm-hmm. the left is clear; it should not be for me. And any extremist communal terror elements. is a reaction to what the majority is doing but the majority's thing is not a reaction so i was like this is something really twisted and then the ultra left supporting every possible secessionist terror movement against india so how can you say that you i'll take your system i will use all the liberties and freedoms within it and then i'll use the very system to break the system to say oh you know the freedom of expression should also go along to lines ki where i can ask for this home only to be broken you know yeah. so you're like how can, that's very parasitic and that's that is actually dictatorial and then when you look at the left wing terror outfits the blood bath you know whether maoists or whether any other groups pakistan mm-hmm. sponsored in kashmir and then you see the dehumanization of the armed forces who are any regular people from hindus muslims christians were serving and then you realize no this cannot happen i can always ideologically agree with slightly left of the center voices who believe in the indian constitution who are hmm. also ready to say if in security forces you have some uh, criminals go for them but not saying you know i support an entire terror ideology which wants all of them to be killed <laughs> and then yeah. we want to you know break the country so that was my disillusionment as well uh, hmm. so that i'm i'm going a little tangential here no. uh, that's an image uh, shaila which umar khalid you know the former jnu student also carries and he was very clear that he supported the militant secessionist group mm-hmm. i remember he made a facebook post there was a lot of public backlash he took it down but the internet doesn't forget so want to drive you to that stage of your life what was the ideological equation and the personal equation you shared with both kanaya kumar who kanaya now of course is in mainstream politics congress that's always welcome Uh, taking rather anti-state positions and joining the mainstream, and you've of course carved your own position. You also uh, both critics and admirers say that Shaila no longer takes an anti-state position. She wants to work and do more constructive and fooling around here a bit, not like Yogendra Yadav that you wake up in the morning, you protest, you protest for lunch, and then you protest for evening, right? So. what was the relation with Kanaya Kumar and uh, Umar Khalid, and what were their world views? If you could delve into that. uh certainly i'll go into that and indulge you with the details but uh, i just want to like uh, what you mentioned a little bit earlier that all these left ideologues they you know they uh, in this very confusing way they'll you know use all the liberties of the state and they'll uh, then uh, talk about the decimation of the state or overthrowing of the state right. so the problem is i think it is a problem that permeates all of the left to varying degrees whether it is parliamentary left which is the cpi cpim cpim liberation all of that or the uh, more ultra left which is the maoist factions i think that one problem that permeates the entire left is that we fail to make a distinction between a colonial government which is the british raj and a and the indian republic which was you know constituted or brought into force by the will of people of india we the people of india there is a very big confusion where all of the left ideologues they see themselves as bhagat singh or they want to be like bhagat singh or they will draw parallels to bhagat singh that you know if he could do this why can't we do this etc the problem is that uh, we fail to realize or like somehow the left fails to take into account that 
the colonial government like bhagat singh was fighting against a colonial government which was a, a racist uh, rule uh, you know against indians and this government of india it is not so left me kya hota the uh, there are couple of things that they say ki gore angrez chale gaye bhure angrez chhod ke reh gaye matlab they stayed behind kind of the brown sahibs uh, thing that they talk about the other thing that they say is that uh, i mean there's this uh, whole discourse ki it is a continuation that nothing has really changed and then what are the things what are the examples that are given for example sedition it is a colonial law bhagat singh was charged under sedition you are charged under sedition so it's a continuation of the colonial rule so the left kind of sort of believes uh, and i think they genuinely believe it that the colonial rule never really ended we just like we were just handed brown sahibs and all of that so i think that's where there is a difference in world view between left and what we call mainstream parties even the mainstream left parties you know sort of somewhere uh, fail to register this distinction that the colonial government was the colonial government and this government has been this republic has been constituted by the people of india so when we talk about constitution we have to also acknowledge that this constitution we gave to ourselves it is not the british constitution it is not a colonial government's constitution so we can't just get away with saying no no constitution constitution fine you uh, talk about you mentioned jin logon ka bhi aapne naam diya they all swear by the constitution however i think the confusion comes in here where we start comparing ourselves to bhagat singh uh, because he was fighting a very different system we can work with the system because we are not slaves we are not colonial slaves we have the right to vote we have the right to so the far left will often call for boycott of elections and then they will use instead you know the uh, violent methods to overthrow the state or impose their will that's not how things are going to work now after 1947 because we gave ourselves the constitution so ye sirf itna nahi aap constitution constitution bologe you have to actually believe that when we gave ourselves the constitution we transition from colonial rule to self rule so until you believe that we are this is a self rule and we can vote and change you know governments we can change outcomes um uh, uh, you are not going to actually like uh, you can just pay this lip service to constitution but you don't actually believe in it so i, I mean i don't know like if this is if i am confusing things more or clarifying things uh... no no i think i think you gave a uh, inside view of how it works so we'll get back to the question with both kanaya kumar and umar khalid the personal right, equation personal. as well as the ideological equation so uh, to put it simply we were frenemies uh frenemies as in like friends and enemies in the sense that we were in different left groups so our politics were different our stances on various issues were different and occasionally we would find convergence also so for example on issues of scholarships for students on issues of hostels usme to koi disagreement hi nahi hoga usme to aap matlab aap protest karte ho even right wing uh, groups would join our protest for example if you would protest for hostel for scholarship okay even the right wing would come and join so similarly between left groups although left groups tend to be very sectarian and partisan uh but we would find convergence on certain issues say fyup ka issue tha ya whatever jo koi bhi uh, masle the so kanaya has been a union colleague we have served in the you know uh, we have served as elected office bearers of the student union together so we have a more working relation like we had to develop a more working relation even though kanaya had defeated our presidential candidate uh to okay. hamara presidential candidate have like we had lost the president post to kanaya so obviously it was not like a very friendly equation from the word go however um i would say that i am more competitive when it comes to politics and he, they they were like his party kanaya's party was more for left unity they were like you know get over these little differences and let's come together we have a bigger threat like the right wing is a bigger threat etc so kanaya's party was more for like left like unity uh, and uh, i was more competitive because i was like oh we lost the president post now i will work so hard the next time my party will you know win the uh, president post so i was more hard working and i was more competitive uh with umar yes also again i had to develop a working relation because even though their uh, party was not a part of the union but in all party meetings and when we had to do joint demonstrations joint mobilizations or you know uh, joint statements etc at that time yeah like we had to uh, coordinate and work together 
um so i i would say that like uh, i would also say that like in the present time i mean this is i'm talking about like 6 7 years back uh presently i would say like kanaya is a much better friend than i am that uh, he is better at keeping in touch than i am like i'm more phone averse and all of that but he is better at you know just picking up the phone and calling so he's a better friend i would say uh umar i think that the problem uh, that happened with umar is that like uh, he's really intelligent like he, although he was an ideological rival we've had like fights over you know issues related to minority or whatever um but uh, he's he's of course a very intelligent guy and i think that the bane of being too intelligent is that you struggle to come to terms with how the world really is and i've struggled like myself you know my journey like it's not easy it's not been easy for me to accept that there is a new government it's not been easy for me to accept ki ha matlab bjp is a political reality uh that they are the government like they are you know like they are not just a party they are actually running the government and uh, uh prime minister modi and amit shah they are not just uh like party ideologues they are constitutional heads uh like they are heads of government uh so it's been really difficult for me also so i understand like umar's predicament also that if you're too intelligent you sometimes struggle to you know fit in to the world um you you question things too much and you um you struggle to you know i would say accept things so that that sometimes decides our fate that sometimes decides where we go in life you know whether we can just fit in uh and work with the system or whether we question the system uh, far too much um, so i think that's the issue they also i think shela i want to get in there that if any thinking in, uh, individual who thinks about society how country should run about the social issues again that again sir rarest of rarest voices who do that minds but then yeah. again the final endeavor should be that it should never be through the uh, mode of violence right mm -hmm. i mean that conviction also should be there that the path you want to take ultimately should be something where you're living for that cause and not saying that you know what then let me take down whatever it takes that's that's mm -hmm. also something which an intelligent mind uh, he owes that to the society if he's really concerned about you know of of uh, of making the society better in his own way what he thinks right mm -hmm. so i just wanted mm -hmm. to add that yeah i'm not up yeah, for you but uh, at you know yeah. uh, some point we'll see him uh, out of jail and you know in a more constructive position inshallah like um, maybe mm -hmm. in a policy in a position where you can actually influence policy i think that's what we Uh, so sort of need we we need to channel all these passions and energies and intellects into a more mainstream kind of way because this is not as i said a colonial government this is our own government we gave it to ourselves even if we didn't vote even if we voted against the party we gave this system to ourselves so yeah, yeah. i hope that you, we can find a way of mainstreaming all these voices as a country i'm not correct come in with a question because it's a little related to the topic we've touched no yeah. which yeah. can i come in with a question no of it's yeah. linked to what she just said. yeah so uh shaila like you said and it's linked to it because uh, so there are two camps right now you know in the indian current affairs space one looks at the fact that you know shaila was a very popular left wing leader whether you liked her or you didn't like her there was a huge constituency of online supporters and on the ground who were swayed about by her world view right yeah. and that world view as nationalist is not something uh you like they liked because it was anti state at the end of the day and that obviously uh is detrimental to the progress and unity of the country but mm -hmm. now today she is taking in a she is changed and you can see there's a more pro nation state uh, position and she's her own person and you know uh, it, it's a genuine change of conviction and uh, that's how uh, so we should welcome the fact that the same person now is actually on the other side towards the you know believing in nation state and hence all those people she influenced that there they she would influence those very people who you know she has the support base on an intellectual level on a on a leadership level not tested on the political but again that's a, that's a something they appreciate but your critics argue that you know it's a, it's it's a decision taken because there is a certain nationalistic uh, environment right now and such as a civilizational churn that it is something you had to because otherwise you know uh, to put it crudely there's an umar khalid spate there is you know uh, left has become even more redundant and uh, this government does come down hard on both on ground workers of secessionists and the intellectual ideologues 
So this is something I want you to answer. How do you, how would you want to answer this to both your critics and admirers? Uh, 